Good evening, you're with India today as we build up for India's next game at the T20 World Cup. Still five days to go for that crucial encounter versus the New Zealand team and it becomes even more important for the Indian team after that loss against Pakistan. We're going to look at some very evident weakness that the Indian batsmen have against left-arm pacers in the show. That's coming up a little later but we'll start with a big story at the moment. Former India captain Rahul Dravid has formally applied for the position of Team India's next head coach Dravid who is currently the head of the National Cricket Academy in Bangalore is expected to take the reins after Ravi Shastri steps down at the end of the T20 World Cup. Dravid had recently met BCCI President Saurav Ganguly and BCCI Secretary Jay Shah in Dubai on the sidelines of the IPL final. If Dravid is picked as the head coach his stint will start with the New Zealand tour of India. Dravid's support staff at the NCA, bowling coach Paras Mambre and fielding coach Abhay Sharma had already applied earlier. And joining us live on the show, former India cricketer and former India captain in Sunny Gavaskar. Sunny bhai, uh, let's talk about, now it's official, we all knew about Rahul Dravid may put his hat into the ring as far as that Indian coaching assignment is concerned. I know there are going to be other candidates. I know due process will be followed as far as interviews are concerned. But when a player like Dravid puts his hat into the ring, you have to say he's one of the favourites then, isn't he? He is the favourite. He's not one of the favourites. I don't think anybody else has has, uh, has a chance. Yes, I, I know that the CSE will uh, meet. But looking at the work, the splendid work that he's done with the India's junior cricketers and the way he's built the National Cricket Academy, there, there will be absolutely nobody, absolutely zero chance of anybody saying that uh, somebody else should be considered. If he has thrown his hat in the ring, if he has applied, then the job is his. All right, Sanjeev, stay on with us. Plenty to talk to you about. Uh, meanwhile, turning our attention uh, to the IPL, a 10-team IPL will become a reality next year after two new teams were announced following a team auction in Dubai. Lucknow and Ahmedabad will have their own franchises from the 2022 season. Here's all that you need to know about the two new teams. The Indian Premier League is getting bigger from next year. Two new teams will be seen, Ahmedabad and Lucknow. Both the cities will have an IPL team next season onwards. IPL will now be a 10-team competition and the numbers that the new owners have shelled out for the two new franchises are mind-boggling. RPSG Group, owned by Sanjeev Goenka, who previously owned the Pune Super Giants in the IPL, now have the Lucknow franchise. They won the team auction with a jaw-dropping bid in excess of 7,000 crore. You know, I'm personally quite uh, excited about this because Lucknow is, I mean, UP is the biggest state of, of the country, the most popular state. And uh, we do believe there is a huge population uh, in, in the state uh, who is waiting to have a team. So it's something that we are fairly excited about and we do believe uh, it will be a furtherance of our business in UP, which we've been very keen on. The second highest bid came from CVC Capital Partners, whose bid worth 5,600 crore landed them the Ahmedabad franchise. The CVC Capital Partners is an American private equity house and has stakes in Formula One. The global private equity firm has recently shelled out a huge amount for a little over 14.3% stake in the Six Nations Rugby Tournament in Europe as well. A total of 10 parties had entered the fray with bids to own the two franchises. Football club Manchester United owners and the Adani Group were among others to have placed bids to purchase a team. The bidders also got to choose from six centres, Ahmedabad, Lucknow, Katak, Dharamshala, Guwahati and Indore to base their team in. In the end, the RPSG Group and CVC Capital won the team auction. Sports Bureau, India Today. 
All right. Uh, at one point, the IPL uh, team's value was around 200 odd crores. It's now gone to 7,000 odd crores. Sunny Gavaskar still with us. Sunny, I'd love to know your thoughts on this because you've seen the IPL grow from a baby. You were part of that original governing council. You were also the BCCI president while the IPL was happening. You know, as I mentioned, 200 odd crores was the initial bids that were placed when the IPL came about. Now it's reached astronomical figures of 7,000 crores. How have you viewed it? I mean, in, in a 15 year span i don't think any brand has prospered as much as the ipl uh, did you ever think when it got started it'll reach this far well no i think it's very difficult to think uh, when the ipl started way back in 2008 that uh, it would uh, come to uh, such a stratospheric uh, heights but you've got to compliment the bcc here for the way they have nursed and handled the ipl over the years they make sure that the ipl has been seen as a successful property the kind of matches that they have, the kind of uh, facilities that they give to all the franchises, with the way the franchises are looked after by the PCCI. I mean, it is just uh, an amazing, amazing uh, uh, situation. Uh, and uh, again, I'm going to give full credit uh, to the uh, uh, to to the uh, administrators at uh, the PCCI for for this. Because look, I think they put a base price of 2,000 crores, and, and of course they were really stories uh, going around that A supply is going to be there, C is going to be there. So they built the interest in, in it so much mm -hmm. that what after the base price was, you know, we read in the paper, it's going to be about half Everybody thought at best it would be about four and a half thousand or five thousand dollars is the yeah. best that the teams will be paid for. And here you have one one uh, going for five thousand six hundred and fifty crores and the other going for over 7,000 years. So that is a tribute to the BCCI administrators for the way they have handled the whole thing. And uh, all, all that it means is that cricket, which had started to become a career option, is now an even better career option. Because it's not just the cricketers who are going to be playing in the leagues, but also those who do not be Ranji Trophy, everybody plays, all right. these players are not going to win. There will be uh, coaches who will benefit, uh, the umpires who will Will the game will benefit on the whole with this fantastic uh, situation we, okay. we saw yesterday. Right, so as you're saying, you know, credit to the BCCI administrators to have taken the game this uh, uh, forward. Uh, but I'm just trying to look at the kind of problems they might have to face now going forward. We already heard from the owners of the IPL teams. Uh, they're already, you know, thinking of appointing coaches and, and other such things because the auction isn't too far away. Now, there is, of course, uh, you know, murmurs there within the BCCI corridors that you might have a retention policy where each team is allowed two, maybe two right to match cards. If that's the case, you know, four players per franchise. Franchises, that's 32 players and if 32 very top level players are taken away from these two new franchises it doesn't even things out so just to ensure a level playing field what would you like the BCCI to do have everyone go back into the auction no detention or or some other sort of formula that you have in mind I think I think they'll, they'll certainly put a lot of thought into it hmm. as to what will be fair for the two new teams and you're absolutely right that if uh, so many players are not going to be available, so many top players are not going to be available to the two new teams, then they will start off at a disadvantage. But I do believe that you will probably have a situation where you will be allowed maybe two retentions, which is, you know, uh, either two Indians or one, one Indian and one overseas player, uh, something, and then maybe a, a couple of, you know, right match cards. And I think that will even things up a bit. Because it's also important for the franchises to mm. have built up their franchises on the on the backs of some individual players they can't be put into the market because if somebody says csk and msc as you know csk is synonymous with the msc similarly yeah. with ptb Virat Kohli and rcb you know you can't think of them not, not being together so clearly i think the, uh, those those factors will be taken into uh, consideration but i do believe in the end we will find that uh, this is going to be the next edition will be as competitive as the previous editions have been right Right, fair point uh, Saiwai makes there that uh, at one point you'd also want some very big marquee faces to be associated with the teams and on the other hand you'd want a level playing field. Uh, Saiwai, we're moving on now talking about uh, some uh, World Cup T20 where uh, left arm pace bowling has troubled the Indian top order for a number of years now. Shine Afridi's brilliant spell in the power play had uh, India in trouble right from the word go. But it was not the first time the Indian top order struggled against the left armers. Take a look. Surely. 
Rohit Sharma's dismissal in the very first over from Pakistan felt like a blast from the past. But this has been a weakness with Rohit Sharma for a long, long time. When KL Rahul lost his stumps a few balls later, Indian fans were reminded of the 2017 Champions Trophy final. Back then, it was Mohammad Amir who had India on the mat. And this time, it was another left-arm pacer, Shaheen Shah Afridi, who had bamboozled India. He's in the game with the old ball. Afridi wins his battle with Virat Kohli. Left-arm pace has brought about India's downfall a number of times in the past. The 2015 World Cup semi-final, India lost to Australia by a 95-run margin. And even then, left-arm pacers had picked up seven of the ten wickets, with two being run-outs. In the 2017 Champions Trophy final, India couldn't cope with Mohammad Amir's swing. Chasing 339 for victory, India lost their top three for just 33 runs, which eventually resulted in their mammoth 180-run loss. Working fantastically for Mohammad Amir. And it's a big one, big fish. Fast forward to the 2019 World Cup semi-final and India were once again tottering at 5 for 3. Trent Bolt's exceptional spell that included the wicket of Virat Kohli put India under tremendous pressure. And another one, New Zealand all over India here. The demons from the past were back to haunt India in their opening encounter against Pakistan. He's on absolute Afridi's spell once again highlighted India's deficiencies against left-arm pace. In the game with the old ball. Afridi wins his battle with Virat Kohli. And now against New Zealand, they'll have to contend with that threat yet again. If they fail to keep Trent Bolt at bay in the power play, India risks seeing their World Cup campaign end prematurely. Sports Bureau, India Today. The competition looked as one of the favourites. So anyway, we don't have too much time, about have 30 seconds, but I'd love to get your reaction on this. Uh, we saw that the, stack, the stats there are completely stacked against the Indian batsman when it comes to a left armor pacer. Is it a case of, uh, you know, the Indian batsman struggling against them? Or is it a case of if a left armor is bringing the ball in to a right-hander, most right-handers are going to struggle? I think the, the delivery center, uh, but Got the batsman out have been very good deliveries. They would, they would have been, you know, any delivery to have got any batsman out. So I don't think, you know, it is a, a question of a left hander getting the, the, the batsman out. It, it generally is that uh, with, with the modern trend of the front foot being dominant, when the ball curves back into you, the, the, the movement is a little too much for the front foot to make the end And right. that's why a lot of players. Like Rahul played across his front back, so also did Rohit Sharma. This fun press, which is you know, which has which is coming to fashion, right. simply because there aren't that many bounces coming at you, has also meant that when the ball starts to curve back into you, swing back into you, right. the batsman find that is a problem. Right. Uh, so, minor technical adjustments, as Sunny Bai is pointing out. There are enough days now leading up to that crucial New Zealand encounter. You'll have a left-arm pacer there who brings the ball in in Trent Bolt. So, something that the Indian batsman would need to work on. Thanks so much for joining us, Sunny Bai. I'm afraid that's all the time that we have on the show. Thanks so much for watching. You're watching Battle of Champions.